Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Leo July 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant and I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for Leos from different parts of the world over the course of the last month. And if you're interested to see what might be involved in that, have a look at the description. Now I've also done healings over FaceTime and Skype for Leos from different parts of the world as well. Now readings are charged for, healings are free. Check out the description if if you might be interested in either of those. Now as the subscribers know, there are no video advertisements breaking their way into this content and so you get to enjoy the experience all the way through uninterrupted. Now what I will say is that this is a, a, and it's great to see the subscribers, always look forward to seeing you. Now what I will say is that this is a sort of a vampire deck. Now don't be put off by that. I actually find it very romantic myself. And for some particular reason that I can't quite put my finger on, I seem to have a very good response to it and it speaks to me. Now, what that says about me with a vampire deck, I don't know, but in any event, it is, I think you'll agree with me. The imagery on here is, um, is, is very artistic and, 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 and beautiful. Is, is what I'll say, creative and beautiful in its own way, just as you are creative and beautiful or handsome, as the case may be. Now, let us take five cards, shall we? Because as you know, we only need five cards because they speak so much to us. They have so much to say. The Prince of Skulls. This is the Lord of Skulls. Gee, how do you get that happening? The Queen of Skulls. Gee, it's all happening for you. This is all, I can assure you, this is a very well shuffled deck. So there's something very much the Six of Knives, very much a question of importance being directed to you at this time. Now what is here? A final card, which is this. The Eight of Knives. Well, why don't you come and sit down here next to me? You and I will have a good, we'll have a good look at the paintings on these cards together, enjoy them, and we'll see what they bring up and I'll do the reading for you. Okay, what a very interesting spread. Gee, you might be having some analysis paralysis is what I call about it. Some worried is or confused thoughts with this card here. That gets sorted out and you have actually great degree of success and productivity. Good things happening with you. Now, this card here, which is air, and I'll talk about this first, it is being pushed away because the suit of knives is air and the suit of skulls, this is one, two, three. So this diagonal of earth is pushing this way and there's earth pushing down from this way. Earth and air are enemies. If you can think of a hurricane or a cyclone or a typhoon or a um, tornado, you'll understand the difficulty that exists between earth and air. And so the elements are forcing this card out. Let's have a look at it quickly and see what there might be that is now moving away from you. <laughs> To get something of an understanding of it, I might look at the astrology of it first, and then we'll look at the image that's here. Look, this is Jupiter ruling the first decan of Gemini, the 21st of the 31st of May. Now, Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. And so to get into Gemini on the zodiac wheel, it needs to move 180 degrees away from its home in Sagittarius to get into Gemini, and it'll be in detriment. So Jupiter is weakened and the inquisitive nature of Gemini inhibits Jupiter. Gemini's energy is very scattered around and so a weakened Jupiter means that you might be feeling that you can't get what you want due to too many, as a Gemini aspect, distractions going on or that you're looking at which may or may not be self-created. Now, Mercury also rules Gemini, and that can be very flighty 
at times, and it is in this particular area here. So there might be some problems with mental endurance which you've been suffering from, or worrying and thinking too much, or having some difficulty in making a choice. Analysis paralysis, but the light is going to come on. Now in the image itself, we can see one, two, three demon vampires that are chained to stakes in a thick swamp, stifling poisonous mists clouding their vision and their minds. Now this image here might well refer to your feelings when you're feeling sort of without any real power to influence situations, but the strength of this eight can be seen as tremendous endurance under pressure. Now, while the demons in the background have given up in the face of their imagined fate, nevertheless, what is happening here is that the central figure remains defiant, waiting for the well, for vampires, the suffocating heat of the sun to pass beneath the horizon, while the others remain weighed down by the blades that are around their necks, this vampire absorbs the blinding light of the sun to strengthen himself and intensify his resolve. And he does understand that Jupiter is the bringer of unexpected change and good fortune, and so he waits patiently until the moment of opportunity will, that will allow him and you to break free of what is holding you back. Yes, this Eight of Swords in this position here, I think really does highlight the overworked, tired mind that could be scared of making the wrong choice, which leaves you powerless and in a mental state of oppression. The experience of feeling lost, alone, helpless, and at a standstill, perhaps, with no solution immediately at hand is what you think. Well, that can be very overwhelming for people. Now, I think that something has put your thoughts at a crossroad, incapable of choosing a path, but this changes. Your mind is really, in a sense, only focused on blocks, obstacles, and there is a lack of clarity here for a moment. You feel trapped and boxed in in a situation with apparently no way out. But the ability to trust yourself and embrace your intuition might well be buried in a mental chaos which is brought about by Gemini. Well, the path of this eight leads you to a place where there is a need to quiet your mind. And while you're in this indecisive state, don't make a rash decision. Rather, it's a time to regroup, which you do, and reconnect to your inner power and your spiritual intellect, the mind and your heart need to regain balance if you feel this. Have a walk outside, suck in the messages of nature. Obstacles, fears, blocks, well, they're lessons that we all experience on our path through life. So recognize what is holding you back. The identification of the problem is actually 95% of the solution. Your goal is to abandon your conflict and create a balance with your ego and heart merging with divine intellect. And on your path to self-discovery, this Eight of Swords will present you with, well, with a test after test, a test it seems to you, to awaken yourself to your true self, which empowers you to surpass life's constant interferences and blocks. And you will have the opportunity coming to you in just a second, as we'll see, because this is happening, to see life from an expanded view and gain a clear perspective. Sometimes the answer is so simple. And if there are problems, what I do is I give it to God. And certainly within a day or two, the answer in the most unexpected form and way always presents itself. Now you do press on and solve your imagined problems because 
This is sitting here on this line. And this is, this would be Mercury in Aquarius in that position that's there. Well, the air planet of Mercury finds itself in the fixed sign of air, which is Aquarius. And Mercury, I'm sure, is exalted in Aquarius and that highlights the intellectual qualities of this card. Now, Aquarius is an air sign. It's not a water sign, as many people think. And it can be detached and intellectual by nature. A Mercury's ability to analyze things brings you finally a clear perspective and allows you to go forward. So this astrology suggests a somewhat detached but balanced assessment of a, of a situation is needed. And you need to analyze something without bias and without too much emotion in order to get the best result. You are going to have the ability to work things out, to unify your ideas, to get an all-encompassing vision, an all-embracing understanding, and there'll be a great degree of objectivity about you as well. Let's have a closer look at the image that's here, shall we, and see what the painting or the picture might tell us about things. Well, look, with this astrology going on here, I think that this vampire is a deadly strategist and his intuition is supernatural, allowing him to see into the realms of the invisible. Maybe he could be a brilliant scientist, a visionary, or a master of illusion. And he's going to be confident, noble, and actually quite cunning. These might be attributes that you have. Now his magic black blade that is sitting there, I think that represents the balance and resolution that you are going to come to as a result of some focused thought and sharp analysis. The point of his blade penetrates the web of cosmic consciousness, revealing mysteries and this crow sitting on there, I think he may even be bringing some secrets to you, or you might be finding out something that you were previously unaware of. In any event, I think what's also happening here is that now you are, as a result of this energy being moved away from painful grief or conflict or negativity and you have a peace of mind and the ability to make decisions and recognize your new potential. Now if life did become overwhelming with difficulty or stress or some feeling of dissatisfaction, this energy brings a quiet calm departure from those experiences giving you time to recover and dream of new horizons. I think this could also refer to the beginning of a spiritual journey to healing. Do you know, the, the point being said here by this energy is to walk away from unhealthy situations that are depleting your personal power and stealing your self-worth. And the gift of this energy is universal support guiding you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your life and regaining your spiritual strength that brings you a fresh start. Yes, this is very much a time of stepping away from difficult situations, of cutting through illusions and fixed perspectives and moving into the truth viewing life with a clearer perspective. That's what's going to be happening for you. Because you'll find that whatever difficulties you have experienced, whatever effect it has or had on you, well, that conflict or problem is now leaving, as we discussed. Now, you may feel worn out as a result of this time here, but remember, those feelings that drag you down come from outgrown perspectives and attitudes that need to be shifted into a higher way of thinking. Now, this energy brings you to a safe place where you can pick up the pieces of your life. Now this six, which has a real representation with Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, Vishnu consciousness for me, 
It can also signify moving, relocating. Your life though is now going to, through this month, be moving in a positive direction. Do you know the tides of life are always shifting between the positive and negative energies? Well, your job is just to keep centered, balanced, while flowing with the rhythm of life. Now, sometimes we can get lost out there, but this energy here is bringing you back to your inner home. And then we go, I think, to basically the court cards of the Suit of Earth. Let's start with the Prince, shall we? This is the first card that you drew. And let's see what it might have to say for you. Let's see what's, what's coming up. Well, this Prince here, Prince of Skulls, and Skulls is Earth. Well, he gazes with concentration into the distance, now with a determined focus. He is mentally directing his path through the universe. Now, of course, I should say that these court cards can be of either gender, and when I'm talking about what he does, this is probably what you are going to be doing. Now, with a very determined focus, he is mentally directing his path through the universe. He is, he is richly dressed, which shows his sensual tendencies and his acquisition of earthly riches. Now the wind flows around him. I think that resentment uh, refers to, as a prince, his airy nature, he's the airy part of earth. So there may be still some conflicts within you, within your nature, nothing that you're not going to work out. Because of earth and air, as you recall, conflict with one another. And yet, what's here is that there is the resting, he's resting his hand on this skull, which is the symbol of the element of Earth, which, which really says that he is about making things tangible and having a pragmatic approach to things. The skull also includes, I think, a connection with Mother Earth. Now, I think the Taurus is going to be very important to you during this time, and maybe also in Aries, I think, either sun or rising. And I also get the impression here that he's really the shaman of the four princes. He embodies the element of air, as I say, which is about mind, and earth, which is about body, balancing and integrating the airy light of clear perception with the feminine energy of Mother Earth, that results in a divine reason that expands into spiritual inspiration and into material manifestation for you. So focus on your dreams. And he's at peace with himself. And I think you'll be quite sensitive, stable and reliable during this period and working patiently with a concentrated focus until your goals are completed you can be depended on at this time. And as this is moving away, you will not let the distractions of life lead you off course. I think what we'd also say about him is that he, like you, will take full responsibility for your life, for your actions and your choices. And he understands the need to make and keep commitments. He brings you strength, faith, and peace and the ability to overcome any challenge. His pure and open heart, I think, is kind and strong. And it's in tune with the feelings of others and the situation at hand. Now, he's mastered his five senses, as you will do, as also maybe the sixth sense of perception and intuition. Now, because he's entered, he brings the gifts of success through hard work. He indicates, I think, that finances are going to get better or the coming of an unexpected financial boost. He indicates the coming and going of material concerns. Maybe some travel is around here again. I was getting a feeling of relocation here, but there could be an opportunity for somebody to actually move out into a rural area because I'm seeing wide open spaces here, you know. And he stresses the value of being grounded and paying attention to your physical well-being. 
He's actually an advocate of exercise, you know, and consuming healthy food that nourishes your body. But he does bring you physical strength and endurance. And I think this does signal a time to get in touch with all five senses, including the sixth sense of perception, as I say. He may also indicate a love relationship about to enter your life that is gentle and sensual, and existing happy partnerships are going to deepen. And he sort of, in a way, bridges the divinely inspired ideas coming up from air into creation and manifestation of earth. So this is a great time for you to get things done. And then we come to the queen, who is in the center here. A lot of Capricorn around here, a lot of Sagittarius is what I'm seeing for you. Dealings there with Sagittarius, Capricorn. Well, what's going on here? She's sitting on her throne, a symbol of the fertile earth, not surprisingly, given that she's in skulls. And she has a, uh, sitting at her side is a, a very loyal wolf who watches diligently and guarding her temple of the soul and her inner beauty now behind the throne. We see a waterfall of purple crystal. The queen is a healer, sustaining growth and providing nourishing, life-giving waters to the thirsty earth. I think you've traveled through something of a barren stretch, but now, almost like going across a desert, but now you've found water, you've found the oasis. Now, I think that this is a time when, she looks very sensual to me, I think that this is a time when you are in a reticent and maybe unassuming way actually going to be quite sexy and sexual and that people are going to find you very attractive. So do with that what you will. But because she has arrived and particularly here in the center, I think she's bringing her gifts of abundance and material gain to you. And she helps raise your self-esteem by reconnecting to the soul self. Now this queen signals the start of a really great creative period to develop and explore your projects or ideas. I do get a sense of pregnancy and motherhood around here, but there could also be fatherhood around as well because they're of either gender, of course. I think that new relationships do unfold or an existing one is actually going to become more intimate and sensual. Certainly, I think that home, family are going to be very important to you and you'll be inspired to create a nourishing and comforting environment. Actually, she inspires you to work on your inner garden, to weed out what is not supporting you and to love and nurture the things that bring you true happiness. And she brings you comfort and healing. And she encourages you also to spend time in nature by reconnecting with its energies and cycles. Quiet your mind. Learn to love yourself and your life. Then realize the vast opportunities that are available to you. Seize the opportunities that are in front of you. Rejoice in them and let no power on earth take them from you. She brings you the awareness of how magical life can be when you are in sync with the Earth's energies, as well as naturally recognizing the divine essence that life holds. And then we come finally and quickly, as I'm aware of your time, to this Lord of Skulls. Isn't that so interesting? So it's going to be a very material month for you. It's going to be very prosperous, I feel. For you. You're going to have a sense of abundance about you, I see here. What I also see here is someone who's a Virgo, as well as a lot of Leo energy over this. Well, he's presenting a skull as a sort of a trophy, isn't he here? And this represents both the completion of the harvest, so you re reaping your reward, and your ability to develop 
and make things happen in the world for your own needs. Now, the, the card relates to the vampire myth of harvesting the souls of the dead, I suppose, but I won't go into that. Now, this gentleman is saying to me that this is going to be a time of abundance and prosperity in the physical realm for you. Now, his success and wealth come from his strong focus and commitment, so you must do the same. You see, when he sets his mind on a goal, it will happen. And he is a strategic thinker and planner with very high standards as well as understanding the law of universal timing. These are attributes that you are going to have in spades. You will also be seen as a strong and confident leader, I think, and you'll create a safe and flourishing kingdom, if I can put that, put it that way, surrounded by beauty that is full of opportunity. And because he's entered, He's indicating a time of success and prosperity, accomplishment, maybe a promotion, a raise, or a financial gain is coming your way. This energy is around here, and he also brings good health and physical recovery from an illness. And he asks you to listen to your body. Do your diet or personal habits need attention to? Uh, again, just as the Queen was saying, your home and environment become very important. He inspires you to get out in nature, and he can represent actually a physician, a doctor, so maybe dealings with a doctor or an advisor or a counselor. The king's message to you is to find harmony with the Lord's uh, Lord here he is. The, his message is to find harmony in all facets of yourself, and you will find abundance and well-being. Well, what a particularly interesting set of cards for you and great news. Well done, you. Didn't you find that fascinating? I certainly did. And what a wonderful month it looks like it's going to be for you. That's just fantastic. Uh, by the way, if you did like the video, do me the favor of pressing the like button. It's good for the YouTube computer system or something that allows the channel to be seen by other people like that. It's the only favor that I ask from you. But what I will say is this though, and that until I see you next time, remember one thing, and it, well actually before I say that, check out the description box for the readings and in particular for the healings. I think you might be interested in the stuff that's there, particularly on my website. Now, until I see you again, remember one thing, and it is this, that you are a legend, and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.